what is up guys hope you guys are having a good friday man i had to jump on on here and do at least a short episode highlighting this massive commitment for fam you as they land former four-star defensive end raymond cuts out of orlando he's been over there playing community college football at garden city and one of the most competitive juco conferences in the country up there in kansas and this guy's had time at UCF, Garden City, and now is bringing his talents to an already loaded Florida A&M defense. So the journey for Raymond Cutts has been an interesting one and one that has been very well documented. If you want to go check it out, there's an awesome article by the Orlando Sentinel where they talk to Raymond coaches like Josh Heupel, his, his head coach over there at Garden City, and he talks about the process that is taken for him to get where he is and why now he is ready to live up to all the potential that he has, that he had to go through some struggles, he had to go through some trials and tribulations, but now he's ready to go, and I think FAMU is getting a very focused, motivated, and mature leader for that defense. And I say leader with, with, with all intent on that word, because based on everything I've read about this guy, everything that I've seen other people say about him, this guy's ready to be a bona fide leader for a defense. And I'm really excited to see what he brings to fam you, but coming out of high school, man, a four star prospect, according to ESPN, he was a three star on two, four, seven and rivals coming out of the class of 2019, Jones High School out of Orlando is where, where he resides from, 6'3", 270 uh, defensive end. And he committed to, of course, he committed to UCF, but he also held offers from the likes of Auburn, Baylor, Clemson, North Carolina, and even Cincinnati. Had over 20 offers coming out of high school, but he didn't really get to see the field much, only at UCF for a short amount of time. Got into a bit of legal issues, got kicked off the team. But Josh Heupel helped Cuts, you know, find his way to Garden City Community College, where that's where Cuts has really thrived. Him and his head coach have had a great relationship. And there was even an awesome story in that Orlando Sentinel article where that he wasn't doing what he was supposed to, or him and his head coach were disagreeing, and he took him behind the bleachers in the middle and made him in, in the middle of a game and made him do a hundred up downs and he's really just kind of embraced this role of being one of those guys in Juco and he's gonna ready to come in and contribute. But at Garden City, this is where cuts has exploded. 32 tackles, four and a half sacks, two forced fumbles in only eight games. The JUCO level, they only play eight games right now, but he was a first team national JUCO All American, was also a first team All Jayhawk JUCO Conference All American. And that's one of the, like I said, one of the toughest and deepest um, ju junior college divisions in the country. And so, Cuts has put on a show, was one of the leaders of one of the best junior college teams in the country. They made a big run. They were blowing teams out. If you go look at his stats and just look at the scores of the games, I mean, they were blowing teams out like 63 to 6 and things like that. So that defense was one of the best in Juco. But for Cuts, you when you're watching his film, you really just see the aggressiveness, the explosion, and just the anger, like the controlled aggression that he plays with. And that is exactly what I want out of a defensive lineman. I want my defensive lineman for people just to play right on that edge of not out of control, but you are you are the most aggressive and physical and meanest person on the field. And that's what Cuts plays with, man. He carries that defensive lineman attitude, and I think it's going to fit very well into what FAMU and this defensive staff wants to do going into next year. And when you look at him, when he gets into the backfield or where he, or where he's pursuing a ball carrier, he just has a knack to get to the ball. He's when he gets his hands on you, you're coming down to the ground with him. And I really like just the aggressiveness that he plays with. And I think he, the way he plays honestly is going to perfectly replace what they're losing in Savion, who also played with that just controlled aggression and was also almost that emotional leader on that defensive side of the ball where you saw Savion being vocal and being fired up and, and celebrating with his teammates. And when he made a play, he was going to let you know about it. That's what you're going to get out of cuts, in my opinion, based on the based on the things that I've watched from him and how he carries himself on the football field. And I think the teammates at FAMU are going to fall in love with this kid. He's a coach's player. And so this is what Cuts is going to bring to FAMU. And when you look at this D-line, there are a lot of questions on how do you replace Savian? That's not an easy thing to do because he's such a unique talent. Well, they found 
like a prototype of Savion in Raymond Cuts, in my opinion. I think he's going to fill perfectly into that that other defensive end role. I think he's going to be able to slot inside in pass rushing situations if they need to go smaller up front. He's going to put on a little bit more weight. I think he's going to, as soon as he learns the system, Raymond Cuts is going to be on the field for FAMU, and I'm really excited to see what he brings to this team. And going into the season, more depth is better. And this is the second Kansas Juco All-American that they've added to this defense going along with Isaiah Majors at middle linebacker. So now you've got two All-Americans added to that front seven. You've already added Jordan Moore and the other uh, and the other kid from Iowa State at the safety spot. That This defense is, looks like it is reloaded and they are revitalized for another impressive 2022 season following up a 2021 season where they were one of the best defenses in the entire country, not just the SWAC. And when you look at where the SWAC's going, defensive line talent is so important. You have to do it. You look at Dumas for PV being a key to them getting to the SWAC championship. James Houston playing a giant role for Jackson State when Southern had a great spring season. They had Jordan Lewis over there at the defensive end spot. All these good, all, all these great SWAC teams have top pass rushers and you already have Isaiah Land and now you got Gentle Hunt developing at the D tackle spot and now you bring in cuts that is just loaded with potential for fam use. So I'm really excited to see when cuts gets to campus, what's he going to bring to this fam U defense. But I had to come on here and talk about this kid a bit. I'm really excited. He did, he had his breakout season at Garden City last year and I think he is primed to have a huge 2022 and possibly even 2023 impact for FAMU. So I think they got a guy who is going to develop real nicely along with Gentle Hunt into the future as, as Isaiah is probably going to, I would have to say, go to the NFL draft this next year. So Land, Hunt, and Cuts. Remember that name? That, that might be one of the scariest trios on the defensive line going into the SWAC next year. But guys, I hope y'all had a good Friday, man. This is going to be a shorter episode, but I had to highlight this commitment and what he's going to bring for FAMU. But next week, we got Jerry Garner coming on the show on Monday doing an interview. We got some other ones set up, man. Don't want to jinx it, but let, just, let's just say there's one giant interview dropping possibly next week, man, that I'll keep y'all updated on. But hope y'all have a great weekend, man. But until next time, the Blue Bloods are out.